Have you ever wondered if you're running correctly? Well, these are really common questions. So, let's answer them for you. And to do that, I want to introduce to you our brand new runner, Cy Richardson from GCN. Hello. Who would have thought? Well, I know, certainly not me. Uh, I'd be the last person. I, 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 did. I never thought this day would come. <laughs> what on earth brought this on? Well, do you want a story? Yeah, go on. I'll yeah. keep it brief. So a very good friend of mine invited me out for a run. It's happened several times over the years and I've always said no. This time, it was a moment of weakness and I sort of said, okay then. And one thing led to another and we went for a little jog and it wasn't horrific. And then, so now I'm thinking, you know, getting on a bit, I should probably, as a fit and healthy human being, be able to go for a run without not being able to walk down the stairs for the next week. Oh. So that's kind of my mission, basically. Well, fair play to you. And then triathlon next, obviously. <laughs> yeah? Uh, no. Okay. All right. Right, so what are we dealing with? Um, we will go for a run in a second, but any kind of initial feelings, thoughts, worries, things you would like me to help you with? Yeah, please. So I don't think I can run. Fundamentally, uh, my wife, who uh, was a very good runner, comes from running stock, um, always laughs at my running technique. So uh, Kate, if you're watching this, I'm having to get counselling because of you. Um, so no, I, I really feel like I'm probably just just bad. Okay. So, uh, so yeah, if you, any tips, all cadence, right. stride, length, all of that jazz. Okay. First off, before we go anywhere, shoes. Yeah, uh, are these okay? They're all right. How old are they? They're only 10 years. Okay, yeah. This might be the first issue. All okay. right, so 10-year-old shoes. I'm, I'm guessing they look like they've been fairly well used. For gardening, I think, gardening, yeah. Gardening, yeah. So whilst probably mileage-wise, they're doing okay, 10-year-old shoes, if you're going to start ramping your mileage up, it's probably just not worth taking the risk. Is the that properly a thing? Yeah, the cushioning will sort of die out a little bit over time. Um, a bit like if you left a pair of tyres in the back of your garage for 10 years and then expect to pop them on and to work like a brand new set from the shop, it's probably not going to be great. Okay, so, yeah. so I do need to invest in a pair yeah, of shoes. Yeah, they're, they're probably not going to be the, like the end of the world, but it's just not worth taking the risk and then getting injured, injured in a few months' time. Okay. So, um, yeah, I would recommend. And also, you've got a kind of a... It looks like a relatively low drop, so that means kind of like your heel yeah. to your toe, so it means you're putting quite a lot of strain through here. I do um, get very sore calves. Well, there we go. There we go. <laughs> right, OK. Um, yeah, uh, some people work absolutely fine with that, but I'd say probably as a new runner, just, again, play it safe, good cushioning in there, probably a nice heel-to-toe drop. So like OK. Six to eight mil. Something like that. All anyway. right. Can I tell you why I bought them in the first place? Go on. Because they've got really good grip on the sole and they reminded me of a pair of mountain bike tyres that I had that I really liked. Nice. So uh, they sure. like, good traction. Yeah. Corner right. They would probably do a little bit better than that. But anyway, should we go for a run and I can um, analyse your running? Okay. All right. Okay, let's go. I feel very scrutinised <laughs> right now. <laughs> oh, it's good. Yeah? No, looking good. Uh, any kind of feelings or things that it's like you're conscious of when you're running. So if I run faster than like four minute 50k pace, then I get sore calves. Yeah. Um, if I run slowly now, I, I think I can get away with it. And yeah, I think as well, I just kind of feel like, like I've got quite a slow cadence, I yeah, think. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. A bit. And I mean, part of the problem as well is, as a lifelong cyclist, I'm always like hunched over like that. So I probably feel like I'm not stood up right yeah. enough. All right, mate, I think that'll do. Okay. Do you want the, uh, the honest truth? Yeah, I do, I want the honest truth. It's actually really good. I'm, it was actually, all right. no, I'm actually genuinely very impressed. Oh, yeah. mate, thank really you. Good. But okay. there are some bits that will probably help because I mean, we just ran for five minutes or so um, and things will kind of, uh, how do I put it, Worse than a little bit of time as you get as you fatigue. But, yeah, um, okay. Yeah, no, so start with some of the good stuff. So your actual, your form, you're very nice and tall. Um, your arm carriage is actually really nice. That's often one that beginners and new people new to running will struggle with. They either don't use their arms, they're kind of like stiff, almost like quite wooden, um, but you're swinging them through and that's really key when you're, start, you, when you're running, just like nice relaxed shoulders um, and you're actually using the arms. So it's like, they're like counterweights but helping with the drive. Okay. Um, back and forwards, okay? So not just across the front, you're actually driving them back. Um, if you run up hills, don't forget to drive your elbows back and forth, that really helps. Okay. Um, 
Luke, you've mentioned that your cadence has felt quite slow and you have got quite like a, a loping style. Okay. Um, and loping, you, is that a technical term? Yeah. <laughs> it is now. Right. Um, uh, you do seem to tend to um, go towards heel striking. Yeah. And you can see kind of like the foot just kind of like flops down. Um, it's not super bad. Um, okay. But as I say, those sort of things might kind of accentuate as the run goes on and you get tired. Um, you, what I would probably suggest for yourself um, is try and just bring that foot placement and planting of the foot just a little bit un more underneath you. The idea is to okay. kind of carry your momentum forward. The more you put your or strike and plant that foot out in front of you, the more of a breaking force. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So how do you actually, no, it does make sense, but how do you do that in real life? Like. So, we could start with just some really simple drills. So, um, it's getting very serious now. Hit me with a serious no, yeah, no, no, okay. come on. All right, so a nice drill is doing like, we call it the A skip or the A drill. So you get into a nice pose, put your foot down underneath. But the idea is kind of like trying to feel like you're, keep, you're flowing with it and you're stepping underneath and pushing off. So, so not running, literally just... Literally just stepping, okay. slowing it down. So like, Okay, and you should feel it as well. When you go up into this pose, your glute kicking in and stabilizing. Yeah, okay. All right, give it a go. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Because you're still landing with your toes down, right? So I'm, I'm trying to come down like this. Yeah. yeah? All right, so flex that, flex that foot up. Okay. God, this is really hard. <laughs> right. And think about that foot coming down underneath you, a bit closer to the other foot, all right? Okay, so it's too, that, yeah, so I'm yeah, overstriding on going, my yeah, exercise. Yeah, overstriding on your drill. Oh my word. <laughs> oh God, right, okay. It's worse than, worse than I thought. Right, so hang on a minute. How are we now? We kind of, <laughs> I mean it's, <laughs> so it's, it's an interesting drill or dance. Is I don't it, know. <laughs> Is it a little bit like asking someone to change their pedaling technique? Yeah, a bit like it's that. It's just like yeah. it's so yeah, innate yeah, yeah. So, after a while. So it? ingrained. Anyway, we won't dwell on the drill. I think, you know, work on this in, uh, in our own time. Um, <laughs> in my but that's, privacy yeah. in my own home. <laughs> that, that would be when you're running as well, just trying to bring the foot placement underneath you. Okay. Something that I actually have done quite a lot on runs before is, um, you know, on the sort of like the side of the road, you'll have staggered lines or like dashed lines. Yeah. It's trying to put your feet onto each of the white lines. Um, obviously the shorter yeah. ones. Um, and you'd be surprised actually how quick they come up when you're running. Um, and that will actually help to shorten the stride a tiny bit. Okay. Next one. Whilst I said you're running nice and tall, um, you do seem to have a tendency to sort of like sit down, like sit your bum out a <laughs> as tiny if, bit. As if I'm on a bike, you mean? Exactly, yeah. yeah okay. It happens, it's really common. Um, and particularly for a lot of people with desk jobs, um, yeah, sat at your desk all day and try, try to go for a run in the evening and you're expecting your glutes to kick in and work. Um, so just trying to remind yourself, and again, the drill we've just done is really good for that. As I said, it'll get the glute kicking in. Okay, so, um, so I literally need to move my hips forward? Yeah, so just bring them forward a little bit. And as I say, as you run longer, start to get a little tired, that'll probably start to centre and you see, you've probably seen people running along with their bums out before. Um, all right, and then next one, we were, as we were running, we were talking a bit about pacing. I was quite yeah. impressed how fast you were running. You said that you've been running at 4.30 per kilometre pace in some of your runs. Well, up to, yeah. So like, so I started at 5.10, it was all nice and gentle, and that was, that was fine. I'd call it zone two, like I could breathe through my yeah. nose. And then, uh, and then, yeah, just, you know, running with different people, pace got a bit picked up. So yeah, yeah 4.30, I was getting back and my legs were sore after yeah. that. Yeah, so that shouldn't be happening. Okay. That's, um, so yeah, I mean, 4.30 per kilometer pace is a pretty good pace. Okay. And for a beginner runner, even though you know, you're know you a fit guy, you shouldn't be going out and trying to knock that out for five, 10 kilometers. No, okay. Um, to be honest, five minutes per kilometer pace for someone like yourself is absolute max. And even then I would say chill it out and go even slower than that. Really? Probably 5.30 per kilometer. Um, the whole idea is to finish these runs feeling comfortable, essentially. Yeah. Um, as you say, sort of, you can breathe through your nose. If you're sore after every run, out of breath, um, trying to hit PBs on every single run, it's just not smart Wow, training. okay, that's totally different then. Yeah. I mean, I suppose I wouldn't go out on my bike and smash it at exactly. FTP every time I go out on the bike. Exactly. But nonetheless, but if you're, 
if you're trying to sort of shorten stride length and increase cadence, like running slower is kind of hard. It is, it is, yeah. And that is something you may struggle with, you'll find as you start shortening your, your stride, you feel like you're trying to run faster and it's trying to find that balance. It, it shouldn't be, that shouldn't be the result of shortening your stride. Okay. You're going to go faster, okay? So but watch out for it. Watch out for it, yes, because that can happen. Okay, all, all right. right. Okay, and probably my final point, um, well, it's not necessarily an issue you're, you're experiencing, but I'm worried it may be, is how much you're running. Okay. I'm very impressed how much you've got into this and you've clearly got the running bug, but <laughs> you're, you've been doing 10 kilometer runs quite regularly, which is awesome. And as I said, you're, you're a fit guy, so you, you can get away with that. That's quite a steep increase. Okay. Um, for someone new to running, honestly, I would, you know, for a lot of people, I was just going and doing walk jogs initially, so not even going and doing continuous runs, and yet you've just gone and done 5, 10K straight off the bat, having yeah. never really done a ton of running before. Yeah. You're getting away with it, but wearing the wrong shoes, doing quite a lot of running, you, that might start to creep up and bite you in the backside a little okay. bit. So if I was coaching you, I would suggest no more than 5K absolute most, really? genuinely, yeah. Just initially, um, do two or three of those per week at most, and then you can maybe start thinking about starting to increase them, maybe one of them. Um, but yeah, it's all about kind of progressively conditioning the body. Right, and so how so long? The same way you wouldn't go and just r ride, so I'll well, suggest to a new cyclist to go and run a ride 100K. No, I suppose I don't have the perspective on what what is quick, what is slow, yeah. what is short, what is far. And you're surrounded by, and I get the impression you're good friends with some pretty good runners. Yes. Like, yeah. yeah. And so you're just getting roped into that. So. Yeah, yeah okay. Um, how long should I not run for very long for? Um, in terms of your progression, yeah, bringing like, it up? I would give yourself, uh, well, after a month, you'll probably find you're able to start just knocking up one of the runs. Okay. Um, so yeah, give yourself three or four weeks of just sort of limiting it to four to five K runs. And then you could probably start progressing one of them. And then after a few months of that, it definitely, you can start bringing them all up. It's obviously all individual and yeah. personal. So okay. listen to your body a bit. All right, that's super cool. Um, now I had one last question for you. Um, seeing as I'm now a multi-sport athlete, <laughs> uh, but genuinely though, so I don't want to not ride my bike because I'm going for runs instead, yeah. right? So can I go for runs on the days when I might not go for a bike ride because I think I'm too tired? Do you know what I mean? It's like, you know, it's not like my volume of cycling is so much that I need rest days, but I think, well, if I ride three days on the bounce, I don't want to ride the fourth day because on the next day I want to ride and feel yeah. fresh again. Do you know what I mean? But yeah. Can, can you, it's basically, is a change as good as a rest? Um, yes, it's like, again, it comes back to you being a new runner. Um, you having done a few days of cycling, all right, you're not going to be absolutely gassed from it, but there's still going to be fatigue there, and then you're going to run off the back of that. Yeah. Um, form may suffer. As I say, you've got a tendency to kind of sit down and just try a bit, and that may worsen quite quickly in the run, yeah. and you don't want to be reinforcing bad technique from okay. the get-go, um, and then, you, as you know, like, it's hard to then correct that technique further along the line. So that's just something to be wary of, um, and maybe just mix up. Some days you're running at the start of the week nice and fresh, and then yeah, if, if you fancy doing one after a few days of riding, that's fine. But okay. again, just monitor that and be careful with it. Cool, um, okay. But yeah, yeah, if you want to do a bit more running and put cycling to rest for a while and a bit more swimming, I don't see any harm in that. Oh, God. If you get me in a swimming pool, I will be absolutely amazed. Well, stay tuned because Sai is going to be doing a duathlon with us. So, uh, yeah. Yo, just to confirm, there is no swimming in a duathlon. There's no right? swimming, no. no. Okay, but <laughs> we're one step closer. Yeah, it's only oh, 5K, in it? I'm allowed to do that. Yeah, well, I'm honestly genuinely really impressed and I'm very looking, well, I'm really excited for the duathlon now. We've got a little bit of a race going on. So yeah, stay tuned. If you enjoyed today's video, please give it a thumbs up, give it a like, and maybe there'll be more to this uh, Cy Richardson running journey that we'll be featuring on GTN soon. So well, subscribe for that. Well, who knows? Yeah, thanks, Mark. I really appreciate your advice, mate. I really do. See you next time.